though they may be small, blights can have a big impact on your fights. Josh, I've heard it's not the size of the monster, but rather how you use them. Yeah, that, that can be true. <laughs> Let's talk about blights and why they're awesome. <laughs> Welcome back to another J and J video. I guess this is a creature feature. Really, we we just we want you to use more blights, and I understand that that doesn't sound very exciting. It doesn't sound very sexy, but blights are are actually kind of incredible. Why am I excited about them? Why do we think you should use them more? They are the perfect minion monsters. I'm going to repeat that. Lights are the perfect minions. I didn't exactly repeat it. I was just trying to keep you on your toes. And the, the reason that I think that they're, they're so great as minions is you can add them to an encounter and they're not really strong enough that it's going to totally tip that scale in terms of challenge rating, but they can't be ignored. Um, and and it's, it's enough of a difference and enough of an addition that it's going to change the way that your players engage with this combat. It's going to change their focus. It's going to change their tactics. And it's going to stop your, your big bad from being the only thing that... <laughs> That yes. They have to focus on. Oh my gosh. Uh, some people will be actually will be watching this video and think like, okay, but my boss isn't going to be like a nature style boss, so I can't do that. Uh, you can reskin these uh, as much as you want. You want to turn them into arcane animations of like tiny, think Fantasia, you know, little brooms walking around. Whatever, whatever. Just be creative. You can take this, but this is the model, man. This is the model. They don't have to have like a total form. You know, it could just be this little like. You know, this misty, like a magical thing, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the spirit thing. But they come in three different flavors, probably the weakest of which is the twig blight. This will be the easiest to throw into an encounter. They really don't have much. What are we looking at? Four hit points, 13 yep. for an armor class. They're going to be dealing 1d4 plus one for damage if they hit you. So it's really it's not a lot. The thing about that is it adds up. It does. I remember you had us fighting blights in Ancient Relics and Hokey Religions, and my character stumbled into a room, and I got surrounded by them, and I was like, uh, oh, I know they're not that strong, but there's one of me and, like, eight of them. <laughs> Even yeah. if half of them hit, that's not nothing. And if you're, if you're playing with opportunity attacks like that, like, a lot of your, your players are probably going to be like, oh, I'm going to try to just move forward and, and get to the big bad. Well, they might be taking eight attacks, you know? Maybe yeah. they get smart after they take the first two opportunity attacks and now they're in the middle of them and they're fighting it. It changes or, the way your players play the game. Yeah, and unless you're a rogue or a monk or something, you might take the disengage action and now that action isn't being used to attack the big bad. This is another thing too. I mean, they have that false appearance feature as well. So you could have them kind of maybe not be in that first round of combat and then after the front line moves in to t attack the big bad oh a whole bunch of twig blights are going to go after the wizard concentrating <laughs> on whatever they're concentrating on oh you cast haste huh yeah okay well here's seven chances that you now have to make a saving throw don't oh roll poorly also like feel free to give one of your twig blights sentinel the sentinel feat um, not all of them. But this just is my give big it to, twig. Give it to one of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like suddenly they think they're okay, and then they had an opportunity attack, and now they're they're stuck and they lost their movement. Don't do like things like that. that, would that piss often. me off so much as a player that like, he he has the sentinel feet. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> Don't do things like that often as a DM, but it. it Anything that the players hey. have access to, the monsters have access to. Hey, you know your table better than we do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That is true. <laughs> the next option that we have here as far as varieties of blights is needle blights. Maybe a step above as far as uh, hit points. They have 11 hit points and they also deal ranged attacks. Ranged attacks are 2d6 plus one. That's pretty good at that level. It is pretty good at that level. This might be a minion for a different type of fight, right? Or, or a different different level of fight. Or have them deal less damage. Combine the Needle Blight and the Twig Blight together, and it's the same thing. There's this weird mystification of challenge ratings and building encounters and, and using monsters and, and changing them, and you can do whatever you want. It's not that complicated. 
you look at this needle blight and you say 2d6 might be too much for my players that might be a little a little extra well make them do 1d6 you know like it's sure. it's okay just, just yeah my personal opinion i think jake is with me on this make that decision before the encounter starts um don't, yeah. don't start changing things like that on the fly but the nice thing, though, about the natural stat block is at 2d6, this is going to be a nice additive even at some of the more higher levels of play. Because like, I think you're totally right, Like especially if you're going against like level 1 characters, level 2 characters, you're like, this, is, this could get nasty. Yeah, but you could add 8 of these if the characters are level 5. They just have this spray of needles all, of, all over the place. Another, another great way to get a concentrating spellcaster to wreck their day, wreck the whole yeah. plan. There are a couple of those in with the twig blights and players, they look the same. You're not sure which ones are, are yes. you know, yeah. firing off needles and which ones are just you mean smacking that's not the sentinel twig? <laughs> nope. It's a needle blight. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next one, which is the strongest of them, is going to be the vine blight. This is one that I think I got you with in Ancient Relics and Hokie Religions in, in the uh, the fight with the hag. Yeah, I think you had twigs and vines in there. I don't know if I actually was able to restrain you, but that's what they do, right? Um, oh, I was freaked out, though. I was like, I don't want to be restrained. <laughs> that's nasty. And and that's one of the things that, that makes the vine blade so cool is it's one of those things. It has false appearance. So while it remains motionless, it's in, indistinguishable from a tangle of vines. That's very interesting language. I'm gonna read it again. It is indistinguishable from a tangle of vines. That doesn't mean that it has a stealth of 25, and if your player rolls their perception, they notice it. That means that it is indistinguishable Not from a tangle of vines. You yes. cannot find it. Yeah. Maybe if you had a druid in your party that could speak with plants or something like that, like. I, I might give it to you, but in most instances, eh. this is going to surprise you <laughs> unless yes. it moves. And it's going to surprise you by attacking you with Constrict, which is a, it's a 10 foot reach. Pretty nice. And on a hit, a large or smaller target is grappled until the grapple ends. They are restrained. So what does that mean? It doesn't mean that you have to make a save. It means that if they hit you, you are grappled hit <laughs> and, now you, and now you have to make a save to to try to escape from it after yeah. the fact. That totally changes so many things. Your players will start to take the environment more seriously with the use of these blights. Even if they're they're strong enough where the damage is not like a huge deal, the fact that they could potentially just be grabbed and now they're stuck there or, you know, now they're taking all these opportunity attacks and, and whatever. They're going to take the, the environment more seriously. And if you're combining these and using a couple different options, they're going to shift their focus away from the boss because they can't ignore things like this for that long. Let's just take a quick look at the restrained condition. Restrained creature's speed becomes zero, right? Can't benefit from any bonuses to its speed. Great. Attack rolls against the creature have advantage, and the creature's attack rolls have disadvantage. That's massive. But another thing that I think is very interesting, especially if you have a druid or some kind of boss creature, the creature has disadvantage on dexterity saving throws. Put that in conjunction with someone doing dexterity-based spells on you. Or even just, I'm holding you in place, and this ogre is just going to start beating the ever-living snot out of you with its club. There's so many great ways you can make a combat dangerous with just this little CR one half creature. And something like that, Vine Blade is it's only going to work in an area where there's vegetation. You know, it could be a potted plant. It could be in the woods. It could be anything like that. What else can you do? Take the Vine Blade, leave it exactly the same, put it under a mimic style, and now it's ropes indoors it's the same thing why i get excited about this and and like what i hope that that you the viewer takes from this is these are some really easy minions to just kind of enhance an encounter uh, especially a boss encounter and it's so easy to change them it's so easy to change them to fit your need you know next time you have a boss battle if it's going to be just one boss monster throw in some blights and let us know how it goes. Have you ever used a blight or a blight style creature in a combat that radically changed it? Like something that you just had no concept, like, oh my gosh, this is a, a one fourth creature that just wrecked the party's day. Like, 
Tell us about it in the comment section. I want to know. Pretty soon we might do a creature feature talking about a creature that I actually used Vine Blades and some other blades in the battle with. So if you want to hear that story, that's indie. If you want to hear that story, we could talk about it. Just let us know.